Thank you all for being here. I'm Gloria Harmon from the Paranormal Research Institute, and this is Dr. Isaac Lund, head of parapsychology at Stanford. Now, we're quite interested in your case as your encounter has yielded verifiable evidence proving the existence of ghosts. I mean, this is wild. Like, we were just three buds staying at no hotel, and now we see dead people. So what happened when the entities first appeared? Um, I was in my room, and, like, I felt goosebumps and saw, like, a glowing presence near me and a beautiful woman named Abigail. She needed my help to cross over. Yeah, I was, I was watching uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp on hotel TV. <laughs> Which I was liking. I'm not... I find the concept of shrinking pretty irresistible. It's just like exciting to me, I don't know. Right, yeah, that's great, but can we focus on your contact with the spirit? Oh yeah, you bet. That's when I saw a man, Arthur, wearing a crisp suit and a real friendly smile. He too clearly had some unfinished business here. And you, Miss Rafferty. Yeah, a um, little different for me. I, uh... I first got the hunch something strange was afoot when I yawned and a thousand bees flew out of my open mouth. And did an entity also materialize before you? Yeah, except uh, my ghost crawled out of the TV ring style. <laughs> and this guy was like, I picture Danny DeVito got hit by a train, right? And he goes, I'm Toby, let's go! And then he yanks me out of bed. And mind you, I'm wearing my PJs. That's an XL men's no fear t-shirt and ankle socks. <laughs> so I'm running through the hotel giving guests a nice view of my fuzzy and my scuzzy. <laughs> Between you, me, and a coconut tree, sir. It's a jungle down there. I don't have a landing strip so much as I got an abandoned airfield. <laughs> Hey, an experienced pilot can land anywhere, right? Damn straight. And were you two also led away by these spirits? Um, yeah, Abigail took my hand and gently guided me to a nursing home nearby. It became clear like I was some sort of messenger. Arthur guided me across the street to a closed-down theater. I got the sense it was something of a homecoming for him. What? <laughs> These two were making pottery with Patrick Swayze. Meanwhile, Beetlejuice got me on one of those bird scooters <laughs> looking for his ex-girlfriend Shana's apartment. Now, my night shirt's snapping like a sail in a stiff breeze, so my baby tunnel and gravy funnel are in full view. Of <laughs> Cars are slowing down, they're honking, they're screaming, put some pants on! <laughs> Look at me, still stopping traffic at 27 years old. You're only 27? I'm sorry. Um, now, what was this unfinished business these spirits needed you for? Oh, well, Abigail takes me to the bedside of this sleeping old woman, and it was her daughter. She says, tell her she was right. In the theater, Arthur got on stage, and he began to sing and dance, and suddenly, the theater looked as it did in its prime. It, it was magical. <laughs> like watching Honey, I Shrunk the Kids for the first time. <laughs> well, once again, I take the road less traveled and that has made all the difference. Because when we got to Shana's place, Toby says in order for him to cross over, I got a quote, upper deck that bitch's toilet. <laughs> I'm sorry, upper deck? Yeah. Ever the gentleman, Toby explained, that's when you do your business in the toilet tank instead of the bowl. Only problem is, I don't gotta go. No torpedo in the tube. You get, you get what I'm saying, ma'am? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, continue. Right, right. So I head into Shana's bathroom, and I climb up there like a... Pardon me, Kirk. Yeah. I got, I got one foot over here on the TP holder, right, and the other foot on the sink. Now, I'm in a Van Damme split, just trying to get an assist from gravity, trying to kind of rock one loose, pushing his heart like real vein strainer, just sort of... And not even a pellet. I'm going, you know, and I'm... 
I'm shaking, and I got nothing. Man, I got nothing. After 30 minutes. It became clear the groundhog wasn't going to see its shadow, so I called it. Wasn't an ideal end of the night, but at least I wasn't alone on my birthday. <laughs> Well, happy belated birthday. Uh, how did the spirits depart? Well, a light appeared above, and I don't know if it was heaven or what, but Abigail smiled and walked into it. Mm. The same light came for Arthur. As, as he stepped into it, I gave him a standing ovation. So, you know, that really rips my nips. Because oh. <laughs> man, Toby just bailed on me. Poof, he's gone. Just in time for Shana to get home. So. I scoop myself out of the window and I'm shimmying down that drain pipe with my, my please hump it and my cheese trumpet splayed for the neighborhood. And I'm thinking, Colleen, you can't be staying up all night putting your body through this. Patrick and Ryan are gonna be furious. I'm, I'm sorry, who are Patrick and Ryan? The gay couple whose baby I'm carrying. I'm a surrogate, pal. Take you for some more tests. And you got an ultrasound machine because Patrick or Ryan are begging for an update. <laughs>
and then uh, one by one they'd step up, slap a knocker, and then go to the end of the line, wait for another turn. It didn't hurt. It was like, I'm sorry, pardon me, Sharon. It's kind of like that. No harm, no foul. Yeah. It hurts. Look, it hurts. Um, perhaps they were collecting biological data? No. No, that felt super off the books. I swear to God, there was one gray alien by a door just kind of peeking. I think he was the lookout. Look, it won my worst Wednesday night. And how did the aliens return you all to Earth? Oh, I was carried down <laughs> gently. <laughs> He's crying. I was carried down gently in a cradle of light placed into a soft bed of wildflowers. Yeah, yeah. The light uh, laid me down like a baby in a meadow near my house. I was smiling and weeping. Tears of joy, sir. All right, well, now this missed me a little bit. <laughs> Because uh, my grand exit was out of what was basically like a big airplane toilet, okay? I, uh, shoot, I dropped down seven feet onto the roof of a Long John Silver's. They threw out my pants separately. They missed the roof. My slacks landed in a frickin' pine tree 30 feet away. So I had to just chill up there with Madame Coot Coot and Prune Shoe hanging out till the place opened up. You got screwed. Oh, you think, Todd? <laughs> well, we'd like to take you guys for physical examinations now. Yeah, all right. They're going to be in a knocker stuff? <laughs> um, possibly. I'm sorry. No, no, don't be. Just be gentle, because they're pretty banged up. <laughs> Tell me about God. What's God's deal? <laughs> Thank you all for coming. I'm Dr. Markowitz with NASA, and this is Dr. Hanley with the Institute of Temporal Anomalies. We're obviously very interested in your story, as you are the first three people to have experienced a verified time travel event. Man, this is bananas. I mean, <laughs> we were just three buds watching TV, and now we're like quantum pioneers. <laughs> now, please tell us how this time portal appeared. Well, uh, I got a free one-month trial to the Showtime channel. So um, we was watching Ray Donovan. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a sucker for conflicted heroes. Good person, bad deeds. That, that dichotomy is very rich to me. Yeah, a wonderful sir, but if you could focus on the time travel. Oh, you're right. Well, uh, so me and her, we was on the couch when uh, this glowing, majestic gateway appeared. We drifted into it and found ourselves in a gorgeous city made entirely of crystal or something. Yeah, and, like, we were welcomed by a group of people made up of, like, all the races of the world, and they said, we are the Council of Humanity. This is the future. Like, it was so beautiful. And you, Miss Rafferty? <laughs> A little different for me. I must have been on the wrong side of the portal or something, because I wasn't so much welcome to the future as I was violently sucked a million years into the past. I went to caveman times, man. Got yanked so hard that my sweats and my sneaks stayed in the present. And uh, I land ass up, face down in the mud, with my cooter and my tutor on full display. Well, and I'm thinking, last time I was in this position, I got kicked out of Woodstock 99. And were there people there to welcome you as well? People is such a strong word. They were, um, you know on the evolution chart where you see how monkeys became human? Yeah, these guys hadn't hit the halfway mark yet. <laughs> Let's focus on what happened in the future. Um, well, the Council of Humanity showed us their city. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I would have wept, but, you know, I was all cried out from watching Nurse Jackie on Showtime. Right, no, <laughs> Showtime stuff, dicks. You know, these two are walking around Wakanda. Meanwhile, where I'm at, it's the rise of the planet of the apes. Because all 50 of these hairy, naked monkey people are swarming at me, and they start rubbing me with their butts. And I don't know if you've ever been on the business end of 50 balloon knots, but it ain't exactly a Tuscan sunset. Uh, 
Perhaps this was some sort of primitive religious ritual? Buddy, God had no part in this. <laughs> They were marking me with their scent. And these guys weren't exactly zestfully clean, right? So they zebra striped my t-shirt so much, I look like a Foot Locker employee. But hey, it's never easy making new friends, right? Noted. And what happened next in the future? Um, we was taken to this place called the Oculus, and inside was all these gateways to other solar systems. Yeah, yeah, and in each one was a planet they'd colonized. I couldn't, I couldn't believe I was chosen to witness this. Well, I too was chosen, chosen by the alpha female to be your new girlfriend. <laughs> she comes at me like a silverback, right? She just, just ragdolls me, and. Look, I, I ain't really into ladies, but if nothing else is open, I'll eat it at Taco Bell. You smell what I'm selling. Yes, I think I do. Right, right. So anyway, this gal wants to bond, right? So I'm sorry. You mind, Dex? Yeah. She climbs on my back, right? She starts picking at me, you know, looking for stuff to eat. And unfortunately, she's finding a buffet. So I guess the snack got her in the mood, because then she starts, like, grinding into my head. She's trying to mate with my hair, I guess. She's using my face for like a handhold. Right? And then she goes back to eating and she climbs around the front and then she sees my ear, which I guess she thinks is some kind of vending machine because she's just <laughs> She's candling, but there ain't no wax. <laughs> Then for the grand finale, she reaches down, she pops a finger at my keister like it's our second date or something. And I'm like, hey, curious Georgina. Last person to try that never saw his wedding ring again. Yes. Thank you for that. No problem, and thank you, Dex. Your jeans rug burns my neck. Oh, yeah? Poor you, I got bush smushed by a cave woman. You'll live. Now, how were you all brought back to the present? Um, well, the portal opened up beside us, and the council said, when fear is replaced by trust, your world will begin to change. And then we were home. Yeah, it was the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. Right up there with getting that email that said you've been selected for a free month of the Showtime channel. <laughs> See, now that's some piss in my porridge. Because when I dove in the portal to get home, still pantsless, mind you, I landed downward dog in a Grand Hyatt ballroom with my clam casino and my bean burrito right up in Barry Levine's face. And who is Barry Levine? Young man who's never going to forget his bar mitzvah, that's not... <laughs> Well, we would like to take you all for a medical exam. Yeah, that might be a problem. I got zero health insurance. 